Welcome to Electrified. It's your host, Dylan Loomis. Quick shout out to my newest patrons, Morton K, Dave S, and Dustin H. Thank you guys for choosing to support the channel. First up today, there are some reports that new Model 3s are coming with Hankook Kinergy GT tires instead of the Michelin Primacy MXM4s. However, it's just a few, so I think it's too early to tell if this is going to be for all new Model 3s or just a few. On that note, somebody put together this awesome chart with all Model 3 compatible tires, and if you zoom in, there's all kinds of detail and different ratings from different places. So I will go ahead and link this website below if you wanna check it out. Shout out to Sawyer Merritt on Twitter for the idea on the map for Tesla insurance. I have changed a few things just to provide a little bit more granular detail. First, we have Tesla insurance available with telematics, meaning the real-time driving behavior data that will ultimately affect your monthly premium. This also includes third-party underwriting states here in the light green. Then yellow is Tesla insurance coming soon in these states based on public filings, Florida, Maryland, and New Jersey. In the blue, we have one state where Tesla insurance is available. This is a non-telematic state, California, the only one, and they are still doing third-party underwriting in that state as far as I know. And lastly, we have three fully green states where Tesla insurance is available with telematics, that real-time driving behavior, the safety score, and in-house underwriting. This is a big deal. We've talked about it in videos past, but it's been confirmed in at least Oregon, Colorado, and Virginia that Tesla is underwriting its own insurance, bringing all of that in-house, moving away from using third parties. So yes, taking on more risk, but long-term they'll be making more money. So as of right now, Tesla insurance is available in nine states and these three in yellow should be coming soon. That would make for 12 total. In case you're wondering why Tesla is doing this piecemeal state by state, it's because every state requires different filings and ultimately different insurance for that state. So Tesla literally has to do this in a different manner for all 50 states. However, once they get the general idea and process down, things should be a little bit easier toward the back half of this year. And Tesla has said they want to have have 80% of all Tesla customers to have access to Tesla insurance by the end of this year. Last night, Drive Tesla Canada was reporting that New Zealand and Australia were both getting enhanced autopilot EAP, which is basically a more affordable version or a step down from Tesla's full, full self-driving beta. Now, bear this in mind before we get into the cost of this feature. Enhanced autopilot has most of what FSD has. Navigate on autopilot, auto lane change, auto park, summon, and smart summon. Thus, the only thing it really doesn't have when comparing to the full-blown, full self-driving is traffic light and stop sign control. Because yes, all Tesla deliveries come with basic autopilot. Now, breaking down the cost, I'm just going to focus on the green for the United States dollar conversion price because most of my listeners are in the States. However, you can see the Australian dollars and New Zealand dollar prices as well. So, FSD in Australia, $6,985. Enhanced Autopilot will only be $3,527, roughly half the price of the full-blown FSD in Australia. Similar case in New Zealand, New Zealand full FSD, $7,168 US dollars and $3,584 US dollars for the Enhanced Autopilot, about half the price. So unless I'm missing something, New Zealand seems like the place to be for Tesla owners as right now the Model Y rear wheel drive version in that area is 42,000 US dollars without rebates and they now have this enhanced autopilot feature that many people would be willing to pay because it's almost FSD just without the traffic lights and stop signs. And we know some places in Europe are indeed experiencing limitations with FSD, but as far as I can tell, those are not being seen in New Zealand or Australia at this time. And if you're wondering about the lower prices for the ADAS features in these regions, my pure guess speculation would be maybe, yeah, they want greater adoption to get more data in these new markets since most of the code and the neural nets have been trained in the United States market. So right now these features might not be as useful there, but like I said, just my speculation. And when it comes to the cost of the actual vehicle, once again, it's a new market. Maybe Tesla just wants to get the demand rolling, get butts in seats in these areas and then go from there. And recall what we just covered Elon saying, maybe later this year, the FSD beta will actually be available in these right-hand drive markets like Australia and New Zealand. 
And yes, I did bury the lead as just recently Trev Page said, Tesla needs to bring back this for everyone, this being enhanced autopilot. FSD is too expensive for what you get. Sell FSD as a second tier above enhanced autopilot and still include basic autopilot with every car. Elon chimed in saying, okay. So we can take this as confirmation that at some point Tesla will offer enhanced autopilot globally, not just in New Zealand and Australia. Just based on social media comments, I can tell you the demand in the United States for enhanced autopilot should be strong and definitely stronger than that for full self-driving. If we assume FSD is somewhere between five and 15% as an average take rate, let's do some quick math. Let's just assume for simplicity's sake, Tesla sells 100,000 cars per month. Quarter one, three months, they did about 310,000. Assume that 20% take rate for this enhanced autopilot that's just a bump above the full self-driving rate. Then doing the math and assuming that enhanced autopilot will be about half the cost of FSD as it was priced in these other two markets, that turns out to be $120 million in basically 100% profit for Tesla. Now that's assuming they recognize 100% of this, but I would assume that's pretty likely based on current feature availability, and then multiply that times three to get the quarterly amount, which would be about $360 million in profit for Tesla from offering this enhanced autopilot. And to anybody out there that's already paid the full amount for the FSD beta and you're wondering if you'll be able to downgrade to enhanced autopilot and get a refund, I would say it's very unlikely I would not hold your breath. If you're wondering why Tesla hasn't been offering this the whole time, no one really knows for sure, but you could speculate that maybe Tesla wanted to keep the options simple, just have FSD or not a more binary choice rather than having these levels, and maybe Tesla wanted to fund the FSD development by only offering offering the higher cost FSD package, but I do think this is a great thing and I do think this will increase the adoption of the software. We won't spend much time here, but in case you missed it on Tesla Daily, Tesla superchargers now open to non-Teslas in more markets, Denmark, Finland, Germany, Luxembourg, and Switzerland via the Tesla app. Here we have this user on Twitter setting a new record as far as I can tell, a 1 million mile Tesla vehicle. Now the important details. This was a 2013 Model S P85 Plus. This user replaced the rear motor four times and the first motor lasts around 497,000 miles, but they say the last four motors have not had the same longevity with each lasting 124,000 miles. People are speculating are replacement motors of lower quality than new motors. Don't know for sure, something to keep in mind. Most importantly, this user is indeed on the third battery pack, which is currently 63.1 kilowatt hours. And on this pack alone, he has so far put 248,000 miles. But can we please talk about this math for a second? Check this out. This guy bought this car in 2013. We'll say that's about nine years ago. If you take 1 million miles divided by nine years, 111,111 miles per year. Divide that by 365 days in a year. That means he had to drive 304 miles every day, sometimes more miles because probably some days he didn't drive. And even further than that, this guy also has a Tesla Roadster with over 400,000 miles. So I don't know if he's renting these cars out or if there's any other context like that, but either way, this is a lot of driving in a short amount of time. This is just a fun anecdote, not something you should set as expectations. Following the trend in the United States, Tesla is raising prices in other places as well. Looking at the Model Y long range, the most popular vehicle in China, it also increased by around $2,900. We won't get into any detail for each market, but here are the other markets where Tesla is indeed raising prices as well. So if you're located there, be sure to check on the latest. Here is a prime example of- People don't forget. They have so much power over the White House that they can exclude Tesla from an EV summit. In case that wasn't enough, then you, then you have uh, President Biden with Mary Barra at a subsequent event congratulating uh, Mary for having led the EV revolution. I believe it was in the same quarter that GM delivered 26 yes. electric vehicles and Tesla delivered 300,000. There's a lot of reporting right now that Tesla is indeed in the midst of some different layoff waves and some of these people are indeed reportedly from hourly positions. Reuters saying Tesla has cut open job postings by 14% since Elon's comments and the number of job listings on Tesla's website has dropped to 5,011 from 5,855 at the start of the month. This coming from ThinkNum alternative data from Tesla's website. Some of the 
these individuals are now being asked for interviews by the media and this one person that was let go did confirm that he worked on an hourly basis. And Electrek sources are saying many of these layoffs have included salaried employees as well in the sales and delivery teams across North America, which is right in the middle of an end of quarter push, which doesn't make a ton of sense, but I would just be careful with all of these reports. Look, it's an unfortunate reality. Some of these people moved just to work at Tesla, probably their dream job. Now they have to find something else. Silver lining, maybe with the current job market, they don't have too hard of a time finding a new gig. With that said, if this is any of you watching, I just wanna say thank you for your contributions at Tesla. Keep your head up, stay positive, and honestly, if I can be of help in any way, please do not hesitate to shoot me an email. Ferrari is looking to have 80% of sales by 2030 be electric, but yes, they're still focusing on hybrids. Ferrari looking to have 5% of sales be 2025 be fully electric, and then 40% to be fully electric by 2030. Hybrids will be the focus in the short term, accounting for 55% of sales by 2025 before dropping to 40% by 2030. Ferrari is saying they're looking to develop its own electric motors, inverters, and battery modules in-house at a new facility in Maranello. Ferrari isn't looking to release its first full EV until 2025. We get a press release from Sony and Honda that's terribly formatted, so I'll do my best to make this visible for you guys. Basically, they have signed a joint venture. Now we get Sony Honda Mobility, looking to establish a new company to engage in the sale of high-value added electric vehicles and provide services for mobility. Sony and Honda plan to establish the new company in 2022 and begin the sale of EVs and provision of services for mobility in 2025. Again, it says for this new company, planned capital is 10 billion yen, which doing the conversion is only about 75 million US dollars, which in terms of a new car company is effectively nothing. The investment ratio set to be 50-50. Honestly, the rest of the press release is a bunch of boilerplate corporate speak, but basically Sony looking to do the software and the entertainment, and Honda looking to do more of the actual vehicle infrastructure, and both working on mobility, but historically these partnerships have not had a great track record of success. I love this news from Rivian. They just announced plans for a large scale wind turbine at its normal factory in Illinois that's intended to provide clean energy to enable new R1 vehicles to be powered by renewables for their first charge. In case you're new to the Tesla community and you see this Jim Chanos fella, just know he's basically the definition of FUD and perhaps even the origination of it. He is a short seller of Tesla and just recently admitted he is still short Tesla via put options. On a recent podcast, his latest complaint about Tesla was now it's too reliant on its profits from Shanghai and still saying Tesla is just a car company, which has been said now for years. And yes, today, presently, it's true, a majority of Tesla's revenue comes from the auto business. However, we go through the tech tree and all of these things that we just talked about take years to build out. It's not going to pay off until most likely the back half of this decade. And like Gene Munster says, at some point, history will recognize Tesla as a tech company. It's just we're not quite there yet when it comes to the actual revenue generation, but I guarantee you it is coming. And one even better example of people don't forget back in 2017, Jim Chanos himself says we think Tesla is worth zero. How'd that one work out for you, James? On that note, that's all for today. Please take a second to like the video if you did. Hope you guys have a wonderful and a safe weekend and a huge thank you to all of my Patreon supporters.